What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About. Ooh, this series is finally taking off. And it's a series now, and the holiday season is upon us. So we were talking about some Christmas movies that yes. we could, uh, you know, dissect a little bit. One of the first ones that came to mind was the classic. I think every household in the world watches this around Christmas time. That is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Ooh. I, a Christmas classic. I mean, there's not many films that um, excel at showing a real Christmas <laughs> vibe in it, like this one. Yeah, I can really relate to Clark in this film, and we'll get <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll get into uh, Boy, you know fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so the vacation series started with the original uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, my all time favorite comedy. I yes. love that film. <clears throat> Every time summer rolls around, you know, that's the movie I go to. I'm sure me and you will do a video about that film at another point. For sure. Um, afterwards came European Vacation. Which I did not know this. Yeah, I've always thought uh, Christmas Vacation was the second for the, for the longest time. Same. I mean, it was just a few years ago, they found out yeah, European was the second. A lot of people don't like European. I'm a fan of this series, okay? I like this entire series. I think they're all have you know some redeeming <laughs> qualities to them we've watched part of it at lunch at work before and it seems funny like it seems if it's the same yeah. type of humor how could it really be that bad i can understand though why people don't like it there's something in, just a little bit off with the entire vibe of it yeah but uh regardless i like it and then after <clears throat> european came this film yes chris's vacation which is Great. <laughs> yes. Um, a classic, and then it was preceded by Vegas, which, you know, another one that's not uh, not too popular, I guess. But we're zeroing in on Christmas Vacation this episode. Um, I love the movie. I mean, it, it's one of those movies, like I said at the beginning, it's like universally loved. I, I mean, think so. Do you really hear anyone say, God, I hate Christmas Vacation? It's no. Just a, no. It's just not a great movie. You know, everyone loves Christmas Vacation. First off, what are we drinking right now? Well, we have some uh, winter ale going on, holiday vibe. This is from uh, 21st Amendment Brewery. It's Fireside Chat. Mm. It's the only thing Christmassy about this uh, about this video. This needs to be a recurring thing. We need to have like a new brew with every one of these videos we do. Look, I'm about to suck a dick, but let's get some <laughs> let's get some ASMR in here. Oh shit! Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! He splattered. <laughs> Let's take a take a sip. Spicy. All right, all right. Yeah, the can's cool. That's about it. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, it's okay. Hmm. Christmassy. But yes, Christmas Vacation, 1989. All right. Directed by, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because I looked at this guy's filmography. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah... Chechik? Oh my gosh. Yes. That can't be a good filmography, man. It's not. That's got to be his masterwork. All he's done is directed seven films. Uh, those include Benny and June. Huh. Uh, the Avenger. <laughs> not the one you're thinking of either. No. Probably one that's better. Yeah. Uh, Diabolique, which I'm going to assume is a remake, a remake of the near masterpiece. Yep. The Right Kind of Wrong. Look at that artwork. It's like the shittiest selection of movies I've ever heard. Well, there's one that sticks out big time amongst all the others. Yeah, National That's... Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes. You get Clark Griswold back, Chevy Chase. Clark Griswold back. Beverly D'Angelo. I like Beverly D'Angelo. I'm well, not so much anymore. She's, She's one of those ladies that should have just let herself age, but anyways, yeah. we're not here to evaluate women. <laughs> yes, we are. She's <laughs> smoking in this movie. Yeah. Uh, and we have a different selection of children again. Yes, um, there's actually the... Do you know the story about why they cast different kids in the movie? I assume just for comedic purposes. Well, with European Vacation, they wanted to bring back um, Anthony Michael Hall and Dana Barron, who um, were the kids in the original film. But Anthony Michael Hall was committed to, I think, The Breakfast Club. Oh, well, at can't, that point. can't fault him for that. So at that point, they cast two new kids. And for every Vacation movie, it's new kids. That's kind of a running running joke. Yeah, I, which is... Awesome and funny about it. And I gotta say, these two are probably my second favorite after, um, you know, the original kids. I couldn't tell you the other ones, but yeah, I mean, the originals are great. But Ethan Embry? <laughs> Johnny Galecki is great in this, and uh, I'm not sure... Uh, Juliette Lewis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both very good in this. Yeah. Um, Beverly D'Angelo, there's like a... 
She's very good in this movie as yeah. far as... I mean, they're all good, but she is very good at just like just naturally being funny. Yeah, and she's always... Throughout the entire series, she's a good counter to Clark's kind of <laughs> reckless behavior. He seems to not really think things through before he does them. And you always have um, Beverly D'Angelo's character there as kind of the, you know, the counter to that. Yeah, which I find hel- even more hilarious... Is just how normal his idiotic moments are right, treated. Right. Everything is a quick cut, or it's dry, <laughs> or it's um, sarcastic, yeah, or yeah. ironic. All the humor in this is super funny. I mean, even from the get go, there's a scene where they they're gonna go get their tree, and like the <laughs> amount of jokes just yeah. with going to get this tree, it just it's. Hit you nonstop. I always love that part because then you see the size of the tree that they're going to cut down, <laughs> and it's so huge, like it would never fit in, in anyone's house. But that's you know that's the the humor to it. Yeah, it's over the top, but in a I guess realistic, natural way. It's not yeah. like over the top in a stupid way, which right. I've never seen that new vacation. But from what I've seen, it doesn't treat the idiotic moment and. They make you feel stupid. Yeah. Like I, that kid in it, the younger kid, right. he's just always ragging on his brother. Well, let me tell you what the difference is between like that new vacation and these old ones. You know, the the new one is like a lot of comedies that come out today. It's full of sexual, yeah. just like gross out humor. Yeah, a lot of like boner jokes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, and I'm okay with that stuff. But when it's all your movie is relying on for, yeah. you know, the comedic elements, it doesn't really work. But the original vacation, um, Christmas vacation, you know, it's... It's just well written. It's so yeah. ridiculous, and Clark is you know kind of a dimwit. Really. Yeah, he's just I don't know. That's what's funny about it. Well, you've got to give all the credit to the writer John Hughes. Oh yeah, I man, I didn't even know he wrote this film. Yeah, which wow. I mean, we talk about one of the all time underrated writers in film. Right. When you think about great writers, you think ah Quentin Tarantino. Paul Thomas Anderson. You don't get a lot of people saying John Hughes. John Hughes is very overlooked. You know, he's associated with like those eighties, you know, Brat Pack sort of things. Yeah, but he he did a lot. So premise of the film. Premise is really very simple. Yeah, Uh, the family Christmas is being held at the Griswolds residence. Um, Clark is stressing out because he wants everyone to have a great Christmas, and it's not just the um, you know immediate family. You're getting. grandparents and aunts and uncles and eventually and, yeah uncle eddie yeah cousin eddie <laughs> cousin eddie um, and yeah they all come together so clark is you know scrambling around at the beginning of the movie making sure everyone has a memorable christmas and that's kind of the uh, the premise and of course everything that could possibly go wrong does every thing goes wrong every scene there's something going wrong right he tries to make a good christmas almost to a fault yeah he overexerts himself while everybody else just wants him to like chill out. Right, right. So the intro music is great, yeah. um, which is kind of a staple to the vacation movies. I didn't know this until I was looking it up, but this is the only one to not feature Lindsay Buckingham's Holiday Road. Very true. It has Mavis Staples, yeah, who sings the uh, intro to this film, which is catchy, just like all the others. I always thought that part was. I always thought the intro was strange to this movie because, like, it's just weird. It's like a cartoon. Yeah. And... I don't know. It's I like it, but I always thought it was kind of odd. It is a little weird. Yeah, it's like who came up with that idea? But it's memorable, and you know, I think a lot of people probably think about that when they think of the film. You know? Yeah, I mean, parts that really like stick out to you. Oh my gosh! Like, there's I mean, quotes. So many quotes throughout this movie. My favorite segment of this film, and I know with these videos, we don't really go in any sort of chronological order. It's just the point of these is to just chat about the yeah, movie. Yeah, we're just and talking about it. Um, I always love the part when Clark is in the department store <laughs> talking to the smoking hot yeah. chick that's working and she's showing him lingerie and I, I mean that that's all yeah <laughs> Clark is just like he's, he's he's overcome yeah and then of course Russ comes in which is hilarious and he's like what are you doing dad and yes yes, yes. It is. it's a bit nipply out I mean nippy out <laughs> you know it's just I don't know that's I that's always stuck out as one of my favorite parts. The scene could easily just go on right. in a negative way. Yeah. But you got to give it up to Chevy Chase, who's a great... Oh, he's... I, I assume he probably improv some stuff in this. I mean, he just keeps going on with these 
Oh, I was just blousing. Browsing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is a bit nipply in here. <laughs> nipply, nippy in here. He, he does a great job in that scene of seeming to be flustered. And, you know, of course, can't see the line, can you, Russ? I mean, that's, that's <laughs> genius. Yeah, that's so good. It is. Uh, some quotes that are just uh, stick out. There's a scene where, you know, you finally meet, um, what's Bill Murray's brother's name? Um, I don't know. I can't remember his name, yeah. but he plays the dickhead boss. Yeah. And he's talking to him, telling him, you need to get this report to me. Uh, he's kind of had it with him and his cronies. So when they're right. walking into the room, he's just, kiss my ass. Kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah. Kiss your ass. <laughs> kiss his really ass. Good. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Kiss your ass. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> just like telling all those corporate guys to, you know, screw off. Yeah. But, um, as a kid, there was always... Th- one scene that I always laugh my ass off. It's not even particularly funny. I don't yeah. know why, but when they're doing the uh, Christmas lights and he throws <laughs> Russ the huge ball of tackle <laughs> lights, and it's like it's like huge. You yeah, know, it, would t- it would take all day to untangle that. I, it's I don't the know, absurdity always... of it that's so yeah, funny. Yeah, and of course the family element is really yeah. what makes this movie. I mean, you get um, all these grandmas and Clark's parents and Ellen's parents and I mean yeah uh, which I will say that this last time watching it uh Beverly's father in this is played by E.G. Marshall who was one of the men in 12 Angry Men I see I never knew that that was pretty cool when I I found that that. out yeah and her dad in the film is kind of the cranky you know like he's he could see right through Clark's dumb shit, but Clark's dad is more of the uh, sympathetic. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, you know, I appreciate you trying, son, and, and stuff. Oh, like there's that. there's a lot of really nice moments between him and his dad when yeah. he's trying to get the lights on. He's like, I can see it now. Yeah, and then meanwhile, it cuts to that guy, uh, Ellen's dad. He's like, come on, I'm freezing my baguettes off. I mean, <laughs> that, come on, that's. I mean, everybody counters everybody in the film, and I think that's really why it works very timing. well. Yeah, the timing of all the jokes is. I mean, it's pitch perfect. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, once again, it's it's up to this cast to really yeah. pull off that script. And of course, the one lady, you know, the mom from Everybody Loves Raymond, Doris Roberts. Yeah, that's that's her. She's great. Yeah, she's great. I mean, usually in everything she was in, she was pretty good. So yeah. And then you have the dickhead neighbors. Yes. Julia Louis Dreyfus <laughs> and I'm sorry, I can't remember the other guy's name, but they're almost like a side plot to it. They have their own issues that. That kind of interrupt into the right. Griswold family Christmas. Right. There's uh, this scene where <laughs> Clark is just fucking everything up. <laughs> the icicle from the gutter goes into their window, knocks out all their electronics, <laughs> and Julia Lou Dreyfus goes, Why is it all wet? <laughs> I don't know, Margo. <laughs> I mean, that's classic. It's, it's a classic line. You know? Just delivery, timing, everything about it is just pitch perfect. Yeah. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. Yeah, a lot of the jokes just, they just play so well because it's almost like it's natural. There's the part right after they get the tree and... <laughs> and... Dude, you know the quick cut of that scene? With... <laughs> it's so strange. Like, it's this really quick cut of uh, Johnny Gayecki. What's it good Johnny Gayecki? Galecki. Uh, Galecki. <laughs> He like he's like jumping out of the window. It's really fast. You have to. <laughs> it's just bizarre. He's like, Whoa! <laughs> it's strange. Yeah. Well, there's the. <laughs> this movie is like. I will say that I don't laugh out loud a lot. This is I'm one that'll wa- do it when I'm watching yeah. stuff, especially alone. And this is one that'll do it every time. Uh, but there's a part after they get the tree and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, Chevy Chase, just like, a lot of sap. Yeah. A lot of sap in here. And then right, it cuts right to them in bed. Yeah. He's reading a magazine and the pages keep getting stuffed to his fingers. And then they have a conversation and you kind of forget about it, but the joke comes back later when he goes to kiss her and his hands are stuck, stuck to her, her hair. hair. Yep. And then he goes to turn the light off and he brings the lamp over yeah. and it's just, it's played so straight. Right. Which is just... I love that. They turn that one little concept into like a you know five minute segment, yeah. which is really good. Successfully, which is not something that comedies nowadays can do. Yeah, and the whole thing with Clark we talked about earlier. You know, throughout the series, he's always trying so hard. That is the character of Clark Griswold. Yeah. He's trying so hard. To, yeah. I mean, everything has to be perfect. Even in the first vacation, he wants the the perfect trip for his family. You know, European perfect international trip for his family and. It's like the harder he tries, the worse it the is. The worse, you know, 
things get. Yeah. There was a part when I was watching this last time that I don't ever remember hearing before, and it's when uh, Randy Quaid, they're about to go sledding, and he's like... You know that metal plate in my head? Ah. How can I forget? I had to have it replaced because every time Catherine revved up the microwave, I'd piss my pants and forget who I was for a half hour or so. Definitely Cousin Eddie's best appearance in the series. Um, yes. I love him in the original Vacation, but his most memorable appearance is in Christmas Vacation. and <laughs> Because he's such a scumbag. Yeah. And but like, almost unknowingly. Yeah. And, you know, you don't really... When do you think they introduce him? Maybe halfway through the film, probably? probably yeah. Yeah, you don't... Uh, he's not there initially, and then he just kind of shows up <laughs> in their shitty <laughs> RV with the two kids. Yeah. And, yeah, he's just like... A dirt bag, but not really intentionally. I just don't think yeah. he knows any better. That's yeah. the that's the shtick of the character, you know. He's just he's kind of an idiot. There's the part when they're at the dinner table and Chevy's trying to get the kids right. excited for Santa, and he's <laughs> like, "I think I heard I heard, I heard on the news that Santa's coming coming close," and he's like, <laughs> "You serious, Clark?" <laughs> like he's just so he's yeah. so dumb. Yeah. Um, speaking of that scene though i think one of the most disturbing things i've ever seen in film is that turkey oh yeah so dry <laughs> there's something so <laughs> disturbing because once you cut into it it's like pulsating and breathing yeah and there's something very <laughs> there's, un- there. there's unsettling about that yeah well going back to eddie you know we talk about how he's like doesn't really know what he's doing or he's just unintentionally like a scumbag mm-hmm. that part when there are walking through the store and uh clark mentions you know me and ellen just want to give the kids a good christmas like yeah. what's a few things that the kids want and he pulls out this huge list yeah. of like it's just funny it's just like what a what a dirt bag and know? then the irony of the scene is clark's gonna buy stuff for the kids but eddie's like yeah i want you to get yourself something really nice <laughs> yeah it's and, and this movie also has a moment where it kind of gets in that real outrageous yeah. um like over the top fake comedic element the sledding sequence of course which which <laughs> i'm thinking I was dying yeah in the well you maybe get a little bit of that in european vacation but previously in the series you you haven't really got any sort of like outrageous moment like that where it's so clearly <laughs> far-fetched you know uh, yeah he gets on the sled and it's so slicked yeah. up that he just shoots like a shotgun <laughs> and i just I, I was watching that scene just dying but that's that's so memorable i mean it's ridiculous it's goofy but clark you know kind of in the middle of the woods navigating through the trees at like full speed i mean that's it's great it's great it's hilarious and then like you said it does get kind of to the outrageous part where <sighs> chevy gets annoyed because he get his bonus is a membership to the jelly of the month club yeah yeah after all this i'm gonna get a pool all this and then cousin eddie goes and kidnaps the boss well yeah and before that happens we see clark give just an absolutely epic breakdown which yeah has also been a running thing in the series. Um, the first film, he gives just a... <laughs> his kids are ready to throw in the towel on going to Wally World, and he just fucking goes off, which is hilarious. And this movie, too. I mean, this... You know, he just... The camera cuts to him. The whole family's watching. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, he is pissed. And I always thought that was funny. Even as a kid and as an adult, you appreciate it even more because you can understand where he's coming yeah. from. You know? Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Even throughout all the silliness, there's a lot of heartfelt moments. There's the part where he's stuck in the attic watching Love the, that part, the old home movies, yeah. which is just kind of a beautiful scene, which is then crashed by a, a funny moment where he falls through the right. ladder. That part, is, it's one of those weird things. I get like this in a couple of holiday films. It just kind of you know makes you a yeah. little sentimental. And yeah. I don't know. That's a great great scene to add in the middle of the movie. i got to ask you, aside from like Clark and you know the main characters, who is your favorite to be supporting supporting cast i guess it's tough because they all do so well yeah i think i really like the julia louis dreyfus character okay, okay. just because they're also kind of absurd and over the top right. in their own world so it's you've got these be- kind of two idiotic Right. families butting heads it's funny because they seem like they're living in some high class yeah or like you know some really nice mansion or something but they're obviously just in some chicago suburb they're next door neighbors it's funny how different they are you know yeah there's a lot of subtlety with the jokes too um did you notice that part where he goes to the boss um in his big giant office and there's all those gifts in the background and he's like you know me and what, what's her name beverly's character oh ellen 
me and Ellen decided to get you a gift, something really nice, and he puts it on the table, and it's shaped exactly like every other present on <laughs> yeah, the table. Yeah, that's great, man. That's I gotta say, um, you know, aside from Clark, I, I, Clark is just the best. Yeah. But in terms of the other characters, when um, Aunt Bethany and Uncle Lewis come rolling in <laughs> at the, it's, it's did to, I break wind? Yeah, it's towards I'd say like the last quarter of the Very film. Very late. It's yeah. Getting, yeah, it's getting later into the film, but. Um, Aunt Bethany's obviously got some dementia or something going on. And she's like, <laughs> like one of the very first lines, she says, is this the airport, Clark? <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's this cut of her that always has made me laugh my ass off. Like they're helping her inside. She goes, don't throw me down, Clark. <laughs> this is like funny. And Uncle Lewis, oh my God, man. that I remember that guy, that guy from uh, Mouse Hunt. Really? Yeah, he was the... the... <laughs> Just like all movies, just like the angry old chain smoking guy with his stogie, <laughs> and he's just like annoyed with his wife who's losing her mind. I'll like, never forget um, his line at the dinner table, partly yeah. because it was the beginning of one of our podcasts. But they ask him to ask her to do the blessing, yeah. and she just she doesn't hear it. He's just like he does this weird thing where he's like <laughs> the blessing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. say grace, and she's great. She died thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, Uncle Luz is so pissed off. And like you said, it just cuts him. He's, ah, <laughs> it, it's genius. It, it's genius. And that's that, like many other moments in the film, are just so memorable. I mean, mm-hmm. it's something that, you know, you, you can pass down throughout your lifetime to your kids or whatever. It's a movie that will live on for a long time. I mean, it's it really is a Christmas classic. For it sure. is. I love it. Probably one of the funniest. I mean, just the series in general. Like I said, I haven't seen the other two, but Vacation and Christmas Vacation are two of the funniest movies I've oh, ever seen. Oh, so good! It's such a great series. Yeah. So let us know down below. You have any thoughts on Christmas Vacation? Yeah, let us know. I mean, this is. I'm guessing for most people, it's up there. This is just one. Of, there's only so many great Christmas films. Right. This is one of them. You know, like I said at the beginning, everyone. It's like a tradition in in most households to watch this film. So. We'd love to know what you guys think. I know we love the movie. It's uh, you know, it's a staple. Let's hope for a four K at some point. Please. That Blu ray's a little bare bones. It, it, it is. We need an upgrade. Well, thank you guys as always for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Bingo.